And hello, open formers and YouTubers. Well, um, yep. In this video, we want to talk about uh, time varying heat flux boundary conditions. But before I start that, just want to say, ooh, yes, my milestone celebration. I'm past a thousand subscribers now. So thank you all to all your uh, support. Thank you, all you people who supported me. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Okay, so we were in the last video and we are talking about uh, time varying uh, temperature boundary conditions. And I loaded that to GitHub quite a while back. And this is Boy and Pimple Foam. So the tentative plan, of course, is to deal with uh, time varying heat flux and then we want to talk more about uh, conjugate heat transfer solvers. So I want to remove one redundant file. It's called a find time varying cavity foam. I'll get rid of that. And I want to start by copying time varying cavity foam to heat flux time vary. Okay. So I'm just going to make that directory first. It's probably going to take a while to copy. So while we wait for that, uh, let's let's check out what we need to know. We want to look for uh, time uh, uniform value, I think. No. Uniform fixed gradient. Yeah, uniform fixed gradient. So this is very important. Okay, this is not the one. All right, let's take a look using the other terminal. GitHub software, open form tree transfer, and boy and pimple form. Okay, so I want to look for whatever's in there. I want to look for the boundary conditions so uniform fixed gradient okay we are originally at uniform fixed value and then um, we want to change this to uniform fixed gradient so that we can do a heat flux so open foam yeah this is it uniform fixed gradient this is where the thing is Okay, so we we did we did um, let's see. Okay, uh, I wonder where it is. It was easy to search for it the other time. Let me fast forward. Okay, uh, doesn't matter, but it looks like we have this uniform fixed gradient inside the uh, inside the list of standard boundary conditions okay so it should be there i'm just not sure where the guide is hmm all right since this the guide was kind of hard to find um, and you now we can just try putting in a csv file the same way all right. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Uniform fixed gradient, and then we see whether we can do a time varying based on the CSV file. Okay. So let's go to CD heat flux time vary. Okay. I'm going to clear that up and I'm going to do it all clean. So. Let's try running this first. And no. CD0 and VIT. So instead of fixed value, we have fixed gradient. So before I, I edit any CSV file, I'm just going to change this first to see whether it works. Uniform fixed gradient, uniform gradient. 
is based on this CSV file and the values inside range from 4 to 600 degrees or 4 to 600 numerically uh, didn't give it any dimensions and this should uh, give it a positive heat flux into this system so if everything goes well the, we should not end up with an error so let's see we can remove the bug log because we don't need it anymore and we can git add this git commit uh, uh, heat flux time vary initial commit okay so we do that we go and push up the changes to github and then we try and start running uh, this file to see what happens hopefully it runs correctly and then we'll be able to uh, see the effects of a uniform kind of a heat flux with a ch uh, oscillating uh, oscillating heat flux boundary condition so it's going to take a while to upload oh, okay there you go all right so let's go to heat flux time varying and let's do an all run and Let's go. So we're gonna run block mesh and boy and pimple foam. So let's check out the log boy and pimple foam. And it looks like it's running pretty nicely. Current number is just adjusting, so you have to see the time step. Current number is now at 0 0.5, the maximum one. And the time step delta t is about 0 0.002, which is where it was pretty comfortable uh, with what we last wanted. So, okay, looks looks like this thing is running correctly. Uh, at least the solvers aren't giving us any problem. So that means that um, yeah, we'll need to wait a while for the results to come out. And yeah, that. That, uh, that's initial good news, I guess. Um, you put the uniform fixed gradient, and then you we change it to uniform gradient, and then you know that there's no like error coming out. Means it's at least the syntax is correct. So if the syntax is correct, then um, perhaps yeah. The only thing after this is to see what the results are like. So again, we expect this thing to take about a few hours to run because of the rather fine mesh okay delta t is 0 0.0007 okay so that's a wee bit faster than what we were going for previously 0 0.0001 okay So let's see, we were doing 0 0.004, now 0 0.005, going all the way up to 0 0.007. And look at the time. Time is almost one second. So we give it a while. It should should almost be one second. Then we can see whether we can see whether you know um, this is uh, actually uh, accurate. I'll give it a few more minutes. I'm gonna fast forward and at least we can check out see whether the the um, temperature fields are doing what they're supposed to do. Then we can stop the video and then we we'll see what happens after running it for 100 seconds. So I'm gonna fast forward. All right, so we have three seconds of data. Let's see touch heat vary dot form. And let's get out our para view. So yeah, this was after fast forwarding and I hope there is no bug. Sincerely hope there is no bug. But uh, bugs are part of uh, programming, so it's kind of a yeah, unrealistic expectation. But well, we hope for the best, we prepare for the worst. That's life. Anyway, here is heat very foam. Again, we have our pressure fields. 
let's check out our temperature fields okay so we have a nice temperature field of let's say 300 degrees here okay so we have a hot side and a cold side we have a hot side and cold side which is exactly what we want um, and the, the things are displaying correctly which is great let's see whether the temperature fields are, are calculating well so indeed we have a uh, temperature fields being calculated so uh, yeah we need not worry uh, they're having the same bug we kind of sorted that out in the last few debugging sessions uh, the videos were already on YouTube so yeah so we started out at uh, 300 degrees here as time equals 3 this is also about 300 degrees so the heat flux uh, varying up and down doesn't seem to have too much of a you know um, effect yet but you do see a clear boundary layer ki kind of forming at the bottom can you see this the sloping upward kind of thing yeah so that's the temperature boundary layer and of course you want to take a look at the velocity yeah we'll okay, see clear uh, clear velocity convection going on so it's starting to go up to the top and then yeah so yeah very interesting so um yeah, this is a time bearing heat flux apparently this boundary condition seems to work and we we don't really need to do much about it yeah just uh, hope you know what what it's standing for okay so let's take a look at the uh, vi 0 t okay one is a unif uh, fixed gradient and then the other side it's uh, 300 degrees so both sides are hot compared to the center then the center will start sort of start to heat up which is not an issue uh, let's see let's see uh, let's take a look at which side is hot ah okay oopsie so this is top and bottom internal mesh okay so this so-called this light orange side is the uh, putting in of heat flux this one is actually the cold side which is kind of hotter uh, come to think of it but again um, it's probably cause the the whole the whole medium is at 293 Kelvin and then we are just starting to put in some heat flux that's why the hot side the heated side it's get it's a little colder than you know when we first started okay so we want to look at this so you see the the the, the left side I mean this this heated side is really heating up so um, that's good news that's that means our heat flux is kind of working and we can take a look at what the the heat flux is at different okay, times well, vi2 t so to and let's go to the bottom okay so these are the temperatures okay let's go to top So these are the temperatures. Okay. Ten thousand, hundred thousand. Okay. So we have that. Vi. I'm just hoping it's uh it's correct as in the 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 yeah. time varying condition so I'm going to press F5 to reload then we should have a yeah. few more data profiles so you can see this side is heating up a lot now so okay. yeah, I just we have an initial heating up the, like, and then you see that the top is kind of swirling really but uh, really yeah I'll leave, leave it for now because um, uh, convection profile kind of takes some time to set up but at least you know um, the syntax allows this uh, uh, this uh, 
there's a software to run so it looks good so far it's a bit hard to tell whether uh, you know the the heat flux uh, boundary condition is uh, acting up correctly because all you all you will see is the rate all you will see is the rate of this uh, this uh, left slab getting heated up yeah so it's a bit hard to see excuse me yeah probably probably the way to see whether this heat flux boundary condition is working is to try and pass some fluid through a heater let's say through a pipe so so you you kind of have a pipe here all right and you force some flow through it with some velocity u and then over here you have some heated zone right this side you'll be heated and then you have this kind of a time varying heat flux okay so the temperature here will be also of a um, it will also follow some sort of oscillate oscillation profile so that's I guess is the way to test whether this uh, time varying heat flux boundary condition is working so we'll probably want to set up a new file for that and uh, this this uh, this uh, you know natural convection natural convection of file probably isn't the best way to uh, take a look at what's going on now again uh, at the, f the fifth or sixth second you can see the heat flux is coming in and then yeah it, yeah the heat flux is coming in and very nicely and you can have a see a hot zone at the top there because it's even heating so the hot zones get hotter the cold zones don't become as hot so this is a good heat flux boundary condition right so i'll stop here for this video uh, thanks for watching in the next video we we'll want to take a look at the the complete data and we we'll also want to see a force convection case rather than just a natural convection case for boy and pimple foam you snappy x mesh to you know uh, have some uh, simple pipe geometry flow uh, and then we we'll want to take one section of pipe geometry subject it to a, a oscillating uh, heat flux boundary condition and then we see what the flow profile looks like downstream so this is a uh, sort of a frequency response kind of a, a testing experiment kind of a thing and yeah that's what we that's the aim of of course of these uh, boundary conditions if you are interested in that kind of stuff all right so that's all i have for you this video i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching thanks for the subs keep them coming keep the likes coming keep the comments coming appreciate you guys bye